All right. All right, good morning. Thank you for joining us today for our Oregon Wine Month webinar. Uh, we're glad you could join us today. We're having technical difficulties. What's going on? Oh, wasn't letting me uh, switch the slide. Okay, my name is Carrie and I'm the Education Manager for the Oregon Wine Board. Joining me in presenting today are my colleagues, Jess Willie, Marketing Manager, and Christina DeArmont, Marketing Coordinator. Uh, before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items that I want to go over before we jump into the presentation. All attendees are on mute. If you need to ask a question throughout the presentation, um, go ahead and use your question tool in the taskbar. We will answer questions throughout the presentation, but there will also be time at the end for questions and answers, so either format is good for us. Um, the webinar slideshow and recording of the presentation will be available on our industry website, industry.oregonwine.org. I'm going to show you a screenshot on the next slide on exactly what that looks like. You're also going to receive a follow-up email that's going to have a survey to for you to give us feedback on this webinar, a link to the presentation and slideshow, a link to the toolkit, as well as a link that will have a, a comprehensive checklist of all of the things that we're going, going to go over today. For you. So all these things will be included in the follow-up email. Uh, so this is a screenshot of the industry.oregonwine website where you will be able to find, if you click on, um, on the underneath the education tab, if you click on education resources, if you expand the education tools bar, past Oregon Wine Board webinars, this is a, a toolkit where, we'll, where we have um, all of the um, example, the recorded presentations and also the slideshow for you all to access um, later on. Um, and then before we get started, I'm just going to go over the agenda for today. We're going to start with a comprehensive overview of the whole Oregon Wine Board campaign. And then we're going to dive into each section and we're going to provide examples and strategies for direct to consume, consumer. We'll break the trade programming down into uh, wholesale, off premise, and on premise. And at the very end, we're going to do um, a review of exactly where you can find all of the tools that we're presenting today. So everyone knows exactly where to find all of these excellent tools. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Jess Willie. Good morning, everyone, and thanks again for joining us. It's really exciting to see people from all over the state um, joining us this morning for Oregon Wine Month. Um, I'm really excited by the energy that's building behind this year's campaign. Um, we're really together continuing to build momentum, and in 2015, we had some very good results as evidenced by the Nielsen figures, the growth in sales reported by distributor partners, as well as by you in your tasting rooms. And we've taken feedback from you and from the distributors to continue to evolve and strengthen the Oregon Wine Month program. So we've got some great direct-to-consumer examples from wineries and groups around the state to share with you. The retail program is feeling really dialed in, and we've got a new on-premise program that um, we're already getting an enthusiastic response to. And so we're going to take you through all of that and how you can make the most of these various aspects of the Oregon Wine Month campaign in 2016. But before we dive into that, let me remind you of the overall objectives for Oregon Wine Month. Um, the first is to build the Oregon wine brand with consumers and really keep it top of mind. Second, to give you the tools as well as a platform that you can use to amplify your own sales driving initiatives. And finally, to provide a structure for a concerted push from our partners throughout the trade. So this slide is just a quick rundown of the programming that we're working um, here at the OWB to provide, and we'll be going through much of this um, throughout the webinar today. So throughout the presentation, as Carrie mentioned, we're going to be referencing the toolkit. If you haven't checked this out yet, the toolkit is um, your go-to resource for all of the Oregon Wine Month uh, needs you may have. Uh, it's, you can find it under marketing on the industry website, industry.oregonwine.org. Um, but don't leave us quite yet to go and check that out. We'll give you a brief tour at the end, and then you can explore it all you like. So on to our plans for May and Oregon Wine Month. We have a full media plan that spans multiple channels from print to digital to social and radio. It's actually already started um, this week with the April issues of publications like Portland Monthly and Seattle Met hitting the newsstands. 
Um, so we're in the process of ramping up our campaign through our social channels. The digital will really start to take effect in early April. And then the whole campaign is running throughout the month of May. And this chart um, has a lot of detail on it, but it just shows you sort of the breadth and depth of the campaign. So down the left, you'll see the various channels and then um, the duration by week. So kind of starting this week and running through the end of May, um, you'll see when uh, it ramp up and then really have a big concerted push late April into the middle of May. In terms of the campaign, our 2016 campaign is an evolution from last year's wildly sophisticated, properly Oregonian campaign. This year, we have extra emphasis on reinforcing our state's reputation for sustainable grape farming and winemaking practices. We're featuring stories from different parts of the state, representing wineries of different sizes and selecting from um, your, the, these stories were selected from your nominations um, of people who embody a commitment to the environment and, um, and also continue to help assert the quality, character, and complexity of the wines that we make here, that you make here, I should say. You're all no doubt aware of the breadth of Jim Bruno's efforts and championing sustainability efforts uh, that have had an impact across our whole industry. And I suspect you're probably also familiar with Bill and Barbara Steele's story at Cowhorn and their position as the first biodynamic vineyard in Southern Oregon. Um, they're also in, in pursuit of the very stringent green building certification called the Living Building Challenge. And this is another reason that Bill and Barbara we found to just be the perfect poster children. And literally that is their poster. So there you go for this year's campaign. Other channels uh, besides print enable us uh, to tell a greater breadth of stories to be told throughout the month. We're partnering for the fourth year in a row with, uh, um, with Brian Bushlack to bring five weeks of Oregon wine dedicated programming to his listeners. Um, over the month of May, Brian is going to be interviewing 10 members of our industry from around the state and they'll be talking about their experiences growing grapes and making wine in their particular region. <clears throat> In addition, we're going to be running a very active social media campaign through which we can share your compelling images and stories. Um, the, we really want to tell a good breadth of stories from around the state, and so we encourage you to submit your pictures, and Christina will mention in a little bit how you can go about doing that. So these are just a few examples from last year's campaign. Our digital advertising is going to promote a sweepstakes that will entice consumers to come to the Oregon Wine Month website. And there they can enter to win one of two Wine Country Weekend getaways. And there are also runner-up prizes, which are subscriptions to Seller 503. So all the materials for the sweepstakes are on the toolkit, and we would love to enlist your help in spreading the word about this program to or about this promotion to your audiences. Um, what this will help to do is bring even more people to the OWB, or sorry, the Oregon Wine Month website. Um, and find out what's happening throughout the state at, event, at events at wineries and restaurants and retailers. And it also importantly helps us build our consumer database um, to receive our newsletter so that these people that are interested in Oregon wine can continue to hear more about everything that's happening here. So this is just a snapshot of the front page of the Oregon Wine Month uh, website this year. Um, the most important reason that we want to bring people to the website um, not is not necessarily to enter the sweepstakes, that's more of a draw, but it's really for them to look at the events and uh, the events calendar and find out what's happening around the state. So um, last year the events calendar was the top most visited page during May um, within our website and people were spending almost two minutes poking around looking um, at events and finding out what they could possibly participate in and if you do any web analytics two two minutes is actually a quite a long time for anybody to spend um, on a single page um, so this calendar is free for anybody to post their events to um, whether it's an event in your tasting room or at a restaurant or a retail account um, this Although it says March at the top, that's a mistake you'll see in the middle. It says events for May 2016. So our May calendar is starting to populate, but looking pretty sparse. So we're looking forward to seeing what you guys are, um, are going to be planning. And be sure to please let us know so that we can help you promote. 
So finally, here's a snapshot of the point of sale materials that we've created for this campaign. Uh, these are going to be delivered to the taste, uh, sorry, distributors that have requested them um, in early April in just a couple weeks. And tasting rooms that have ordered a kit uh, earlier this month can expect to receive that in the middle of April to decorate your tasting room and get it ready for Oregon Wine Month. All of these materials are also available to download through the toolkit on the industry website. So that's an overview of the campaign, and now I'm going to turn it over to Christina to talk about um, how you can get involved through your direct-to-consumer channels. Hello, everybody. This is Christina. I'm the marketing coordinator here at the Oregon Wine Board. Um, so the next part of the presentation, Jess and I are going to be discussing how to incorporate the Oregon Wine Month campaign into your existing business sales channels. We're going to be talking about the tools that OWB has planned, produced for you, and hopefully provide you with some inspiration for how you can use them. So we're going to start off by talking about the direct-to-consumer channel. Um, the, the real key for this channel is to be draw, doing things to draw people out of hibernation and get them excited about drinking your wine throughout the summer. And Oregon Wine Month being in May is the perfect time to do that. Um, so I'm gonna be providing you with some real life examples of things that people did last year, as well as some suggestions um, that we have for you. We're gonna be talking about some tasting room specials, mailing list promotions, and I'm also gonna be showing you some of the resources available, such as the graphics and templates that we've created. So our, last year, um, a really great example of a tasting room special, Argyle, Purple Hands, and Rocco came together and they produced the Family Affair promotion that they offered throughout the month of May. It was really cool. Um, they sold family cards for $10 and those cards were good for two for one tastings across the three wineries. Um, we thought this was a really cool idea because it was something that they were offering only during Oregon Wine Month, so it was a good draw to bring people to their tasting room. And it also helped to tell their stories, their individual brand stories within the context of other wineries in the region. So pretty neat. Um, if you're, so Cathedral Ridge in the Columbia Gorge, we were just out there for um, a board meeting and we stopped in to go tasting. And they do a really awesome job with pairing recipes to the wines. Um, in their tasting room. And so we had this great idea that, um, I'm not sure if it's great, <laughs> so let me know. Um, but we had an idea that um, of taking the recipes um, and putting them on the tasting menu cards that we've created um, for Oregon Wine Month and using them to distribute through your tasting room. So um, this is an example of how you might do that. They made us this bruschetta, it's very good. That um, menu template is available on the toolkit. Elizabeth Chambers did a great job with incorporating the Oregon Wine Month campaign into her mailing, her email list promotions. She downloaded, the, the tasting room downloaded the logo from the Oregon Wine Month toolkit and uploaded it to their newsletter and offered um, some specials throughout Oregon Wine Month and just let their mailing list know that it was Oregon Wine Month throughout the month of May. Sokol Blosser did a, um, a shipping promotion during Oregon Wine Month. Again, it's a really great way to, um, you know, get people excited about stocking up on your wine for the summer. And it's a great way to um, use that Oregon Wine Month platform. Um, just a, a note about that. Legally, um, it should be shipping included instead of complimentary shipping. If you have any questions about the legality around that, um, that's something that the Oregon Wine Association has resources available to help explain that, but um, it was a really fun promotion. Naked Winery, they're always doing fun and interesting things. They actually incorporated the campaign into their logo very seamlessly, so that was fun. Del Rio, I think there's actually some Del Rio people joining the seminar. They did a great job with creating an Oregon Wine Month kickoff party. So they hosted a party on May 1st and 
really got their community excited about the month and hosted a beautiful event. Another event that was done during Oregon Wine Month was done by Chapter 24. They brought in a street artist and um, it was something that they did special for Oregon Wine Month and they got a ton of press around it. I went to the event, it was really cool to see. And it was a really interesting way of offering something unique to the, to the community that really ex helped to express their brand culture. And because it was so different, it was um, it got it got a lot of earned media at that time. But events, it's just a great way to it's a great thing to have these unique events during Oregon Wine Month because it's um, easy for us to promote them as well. And if all else fails, go big. <laughs> this is a banner that Del Rio created. I think they got just like the biggest size banner they could find and put it up there and we loved it. So um, we at the Oregon Wine Board, we love AVA. Um, when AVAs come together to host um, tasting events, there were several events that happened during Oregon Wine Month last year. We have a policy at the Oregon Wine Board of not promoting like single winery events through our promotional channels. Um, but for AVA events, we love them because we can promote them in our newsletter and on our Facebook and any other um, advertising outlets. So it's a really um, great way to bring your community together and to get a lot more press and publicity. Um, last year, PDX Urban Wineries had a really fun tasting. Uh, Dundee Block Party had a really successful kickoff for Oregon Wine Month, um, which and I believe that they're doing it again this year. We have some pictures from that a blogger posted um, really well attended and I from what I understand a lot of wine was sold at that event. Rome the Rogue also did a, a unique thing they put together a self guided tour of their region so kind of a cool way to encourage people to come out and make a day of it and visit or a weekend and visit um, you know more than one winery. So there's a lot that you can be starting to do now if you haven't already. At your next AVA meeting, plan an Oregon Wine Month kickoff event, discuss a month-long passport or any other type of activity um, that you might want to do. Um, you know, again, it's something that the OWB really loves to promote when AVAs get together. Um, tell your mailing list the Oregon Wine Month is coming up. It's a really great time to visit wine country because there's a lot of cool events going on at that time and it's a good time for them to stock up on wine for the summer. And start planning a special event for your wine club or your um, mailing list, but just make sure every event that you put together, keep us in the loop so that we can put it on the event calendar and we can promote it for you. We're also working on expanding our digital and social campaign for Oregon Wine Month 2016. Um, so we'd like to encourage you guys to participate and we're going to be showing you some example, social media examples, newsletter examples, and um, some of the things, talk a little bit more about what we're going to be doing. So Oregon Wine Board is not currently on Instagram. However, we still, um, you know, I'm still checking it all the time. And something that we do that Travel Oregon has had a lot of success with and that um, Luna Bean Media that we work with, what they've recommended doing is monitoring social, monitoring Instagram and posting some of those pictures on our Facebook. So we're going to be doing that this year. Um, last year, there were there was a lot of activity on Instagram. Um, so make sure to be using the hashtag Oregon Wine Month. There was probably the most activity on Facebook. And these are some really great examples of things that wineries did, reusing some of the resources that we produced as well as creating their own. So I'm working on building the toolkit out for social media now. Um, but last year, you know, people incorporated our logos and our POS um, for posts. Cooper Mountain Vineyards did a really great job taking downloading the white logo from the toolkit and overlaying it on a picture to make it their own. So there's a lot of different things that you can do and a lot of things to talk about. Twitter, very similar. Um, type of campaign. Again, we're using the hashtag Oregon Wine Month. 
I, uh, so I talked a little bit about newsletters during DTC, but I like these two examples because they show, you know, Elizabeth Chambers used the campaign assets that we developed, whereas ERAF, um, they created their own, both worked and look great. So we just mentioned earlier the social media campaign that we're going to be continuing this year, um, just uploading as many pictures as we can um, from wineries to help to tell their stories. Um, so you can upload your wineries pictures from our from the Oregon Wine Month toolkit. Make sure to include a caption so that I can try to write something <laughs> witty and interesting. Um, and the you know, just include some, some fun pictures um, and I can put those up there for you. Um, also use the graphics provided in the toolkit that will be continuing to come throughout April to update your cover photo and to create your, or, your own Oregon Wine Month imagery. And don't forget the hashtag Oregon Wine Month tag. So I'm gonna switch this over, hand it back to Jess, and we're gonna talk about the trade engagement opportunities. Great. Hello again, everyone. So I'm going to start off the trade section by um, talking about some wholesaler activity as well as chain and off-premise retail. And then Christina will wrap things up uh, by talking about our on-premise program. So last year, we introduced a new distributor contest, the Oregon Wine Month Rep of the Year contest. And we're very excited to repeat this again this year. Um, the contest is open to all distributor reps of Oregon wine, and there are two winners. There will be two winners, um, one with an on-premise focus and one with an off-premise focus. And what this does is really help us uh, level the playing field. Um, it's also important to note that the size of a rep's portfolio is not the most important part about this. Um, it's more about the growth in their sales or their placements as well as the more qualitative factors that go into selling wine, like their creativity and enthusiasm. So the, we have a nomination form that will be open late May, and there's a chance to not only share quantitative results, but also, um, also kind of describe why this person um, is deserving to win. So it's really important also to note that anybody can nominate a rep. So last year's winners were actually both from Young's Market and they were absolutely deserving based on the energy they put behind uh, Oregon wine during the month. But I have to say that the odds were stacked in the favor of the Young's team because about 90% of the nominations that we received were for Young's representatives. Uh, but we know and we, yeah, we absolutely know that they're not the only people out there that are hustling for your wineries. And so what I want to invite everybody on the line and around the industry to do is help us recognize the, the other people that are out there selling your wines um, that we don't necessarily know about, but you can help um, can help give them the recognition by submitting a nomination towards the end of May. In terms of getting your wholesalers behind Oregon Wine Month, we've got a few ideas for you. So first off, uh, be sure to, to share this Rep of the Year contest with them. Uh, there's a sell sheet that's available on the toolkit that you can download and easily either email or hand out to them when you see them. Um, and be sure to nominate them if they deserve it. We're also making it easy for you to tell them about the overall Oregon Wine Month campaign and program and all of the facets of that. So there's a PowerPoint presentation that's available to download from the toolkit that's specifically for distributors. Um, so that's something, again, you can um, you can email it to them. You can ask about opportunities to come in and present to their team, um, perhaps paired up with some other Oregon wineries that are in their book and do a tasting, an educational seminar on Oregon um, to really get them jazzed up to go and sell their Oregon wines. Um, and lastly, we highly recommend that you plan a sales goal for your distributor during the month of May or maybe even um, for a couple of months. And to do that, you know, think about what sort of unique experience you can offer if the goal is met. Would it be dinner with your winemaker or maybe you have a great guest house you can offer the top sales rep and their partner to come and stay. Um, and so this is just a great way to keep your brand top of mind in a moment where Oregon will already be amplified. 
Moving on to off-premise, larger retail shops are great for raising the visibility of the Oregon Wine Month campaign. We recognize that not all brands have the level of production and distribution to be uh, to have placements in these can in these accounts. However, the billboarding effect that we get for the industry as a whole when when these guys give floor split floor space um, to Oregon wine is really phenomenal and helps just raise the overall visibility of Oregon wine. Um, so this is why we partner with a handful of retail chains around the state to get their wine stewards really energized about giving extra support to Oregon wine. Many of them are already great supporters of Oregon, but this just gives them a little added incentive. So we're hosting a display competition among the wine stewards at each of these chains. And notably this year, we've added Rays to help us ensure and expand our great presence downstate. And that came off of um, feedback that we received from, from you guys down in Southern Oregon. Um, I just wanted to share a few pictures of the sorts of displays that we saw in state last year. They're really eye-catching and um, I think the graphics, that big bold bottle graphic is really exciting and compelling to the people that are putting these up because they know that people will be drawn to, um, to that graphic and to the displays. So while we have the chains covered, it's independent retailers and bottle shops that are much more difficult for us to reach individually. There are just so many of them. Um, and this is where it's really extra important and a really good opportunity for you to increase your presence at these accounts at the ones that are most important to you. Um, we recommend that you approach these folks and schedule a time to during May to come in and do a tasting or maybe have a little sampling of a food and wine pairing. Um, if it's one of the, um, the very, uh, there are many wine bar slash bottle shops around the state. And if it's one of those, you could work with them for a night and pour a flight of your wine. Um, so these are all some ideas of getting involved with independent retailers. There are point of sale materials. All of those point of sale materials we shared earlier are available to print. And that includes customizable signage, which Christina mentioned. So it gives you the chance to really promote um, the, the activity, the unique activities that might be happening at these accounts. Um, and please don't forget, we're um, going to keep hammering this home. Please don't forget to submit your events to the consumer calendar so that we can help you promote them. And now, we have um, a quick oh, we have a question. Um, what do the wine stewards win with their displays? So depending on the size of the account, um, so for um, Safeway, Fred Meyer, and new seasons, the top display winner will get a, um, a ticket to IPNC. Um, there for, for um, Safeway and Fred Meyer, because they have so many channels and much larger teams, we're also this year introducing a secondary um, or a second place prize, which is um, a gift certificate to an Oregon wine A-list restaurant of the winner's choice. That is also the prize for Raise. Raise was a late addition and we didn't have the budget to add another IPNC ticket. Those, as you probably know, are pretty pricey, um, but we are offering them the, um, the restaurant gift certificate as well. And I spoke with um, one of the reps that calls on Raise yesterday and she thought that that was gonna be really motivating to their team. They only have about, um, I think about 10 outlets that have a real fine wine program. So it would be among those um, stewards that raise. Two more questions. Yes. Do you nominate a Washington distributor? And how are, the, how are they chosen? How are the winners chosen? Yeah, so the Washington, just the question about can you nominate a Washington distributor? Yes, absolutely. They don't have to be somebody that works in Oregon. They just have to be selling Oregon wine. Um, and the so we have downloaded... Um, Basically, when we get all the nominations, we download them, we can go through them, call down a list that is um, sort of our, our top nominees. Um, we discuss those internally, and that's also something that the marketing committee gets can get involved with, and we'll be engaging with them this year um, to, to help us select the final winners. So it's sort of an uh, industry representatives can can uh, help us select those, but um, we really just look at uh, the quality of, of the performance of the individuals throughout, um, throughout May as submitted by their nominators. 
pictures and actual results are really helpful in that as well. Okay. All right, so let me pass it over to Christina to talk about our exciting new restaurant program. I'm back, hello. Um, so we're really excited to be developing this on-premise promotion for the first time for Oregon Wine Month. As we were developing this platform, you know, we were keeping in mind that there really is no one promotion that fits all restaurants. Every restaurant concept is different. And so we designed this on-premise program to really represent that and to allow for, you know, flexible promotions and, you know, really allow the restaurant to do what they think is best for their restaurant um, during Oregon Wine Month. So I'm going to be talking about our new open table partnership. I'm going to be talking about the things that the Oregon Wine Board is doing for on-premise promotions. We're going to be talking about the Oregon Wine A-list restaurant integration, and I'm going to be showing you some of the resources available for this channel. So this year, for the first time, we're partnering with Open Table. If you're not familiar with Open Table, it is the um, only restaurant reservation system available across the country. There are over 5 million people that use it across the country, and the majority of the restaurants that we're targeting are on this platform. So when I reached out to them, our goal really with this partnership is to increase on-premise participation in Oregon Wine Month. Um, so the way that this promotion works is any restaurant that is signed up with Open Table that is offering a month-long Oregon Wine Month promotion will be um, will be called out on an Open Table promotion page, which they will be promoting through their um, their digital channels, like their newsletter, and their newsletter has over 10,000 people signed up for it, and their social media channels. Um, so a month-long promotion is defined as anything that that restaurant is doing related to Oregon wine that's different from what they normally offer. So this provides a lot of flexibility that it could be a month-long tasting flight, it could be 10% off Oregon wine bottles, a wine by the glass feature, so anything different. Um, so they'll be listed on the open table page with their promotion defined. Um, if a restaurant decides to sign up to do a month long promotion and they're not currently um, partnered with open table, the Oregon Wine Board will still be able to promote them. Um, so in order for restaurants to sign up for this promotion, they need to fill out the Oregon Wine Month event form that logo is there, or the link is there at the bottom. Um, but we're really excited about this partnership because it's providing um, a really great platform for us to drive traffic to these restaurants that are supporting our industry throughout May. So additionally, in addition to the Oregon Wine Month um, open table promotion, ODUB is also going to be promoting all on-premise activity through our digital advertising, our social channels, and our consumer newsletter. I'm finalizing right now, um, setting up advertising campaigns with Eater, Portland Monthly, and The Oregonian. And we're also planning out um, a really comprehensive Facebook campaign to promote these um, on-premise promotions um, throughout Oregon and the Seattle metro area. It's really, really important that if you know of a restaurant that's doing an Oregon Wine Month promotion, or if you talk to a restaurant, the, the form needs to be filled out so that we know what's going on. Last year, a lot of things happened that we just never heard about, and so we can't promote them if we don't know they're going on. So that form is really important. You can fill that form out for a restaurant, or you can have them fill it out, and it's really easy. It takes like a minute. Um, the pictures on the slide, um, the, on the on the left is an advertisement that we did during Portland Dining Month. Um, we did this with the help of Luna Bean, and we found a lot of success with it. We were able to reach 22,000 people within the Portland metro area for uh, very cost effectively. So we're really excited about the Facebook campaign that we're building out to promote these restaurants. And if you're if you've never seen the consumer newsletter that we do from our office, it's the Oregon Wine Insider. You can sign up for it on the OregonWine.org website, um, but that's also another 
um, channel that will be promoting these on-premise promotions. We've also been in contact with the Oregon Wine A-List restaurants throughout Oregon and Washington to really encourage them to sign up for the Oregon, sign up to do something during Oregon Wine Month. To sweeten the deal, we're offering a $50 server incentive to participating A-List restaurants. So um, any restaurant, any Oregon Wine A-List restaurant that is offering a month-long Oregon Wine Month promotion will receive a $50 Visa gift card. And they can use that gift card to um, provide an incentive for servers to sell Oregon wine that month. So I used to be a server and competition always makes the job a little bit more fun because you get the prize and you also get bragging rights. And you know it's really great to have a relationship with the wine buyer of restaurants, but at the end of the day, it's the server that is actually selling your wine. So it's really great to be able to offer this incentive to these restaurants and we hope to see a lot of traction from it. Um, and so for more information, you can go to the toolkit on that. Um, a couple ideas and inspiration that you can consider as you're talking to your restaurant accounts. Um, one idea that we're communicating very strongly to the A-list restaurants is the idea of having a month long Oregon Wine Month prefix menu complemented by Oregon wine pairings. And I'll show you some examples of that. Um, some other ideas you can talk to restaurants about um, include, you know, Oregon wine flights, buy the glass features, discounts. So in order to, again, in order to participate in the, Orla the open table promotion, it just needs to be a month long promotion. So this is an example of an Oregon wine month prefix menu. It's inspired by James Ron um, of the Heathman, which was the Oregon wine program, Oregon wine A-list wine program of the year. Um, this is an example based on what they did for Portland Dining Month. So it's a three course menu paired to um, wines by Britain Vineyards. And so they kept, um, so the Oregon Wine Month menu would be kept on all month and then you could consider offering for one night of that month or two nights of that month coming in, having the winemaker come into the restaurant to meet and greet guests and talk about their wine. That's what uh, James, what, that's what the Heathman did with Britain Vineyards on March 1st, and they had a good experience doing that. So it's kind of a different take on a winemaker dinner. Uh, we also had our first restaurant sign up yesterday to participate in an on-premise promotion with Open Table. Um, this is what Bistro Maison will be offering throughout the course, the, throughout May. It's a three course menu and they'll be highlighting a different winery every week. So for $36, guests can have the three, can pick one um, dish from each, each course and they can pick a glass of Stoller wine to have. Um, and then that winery will change every week. So we're excited to have them join us on that. So this is an example of the on-premise POS that we're offering. Um, we have table tents and menu templates, and these things can be downloaded on the toolkit, as well as you know, if a, if a restaurant wants a poster or a shelf talker, whatever they, they need is available on the toolkit, logos, et cetera. So there's a lot to be doing right now to set these things up. Reach out to your top accounts to share um, the Oregon Wine Month plans with the Open Table Partnership. Um, reach out to your top accounts to set up month-long promotions, develop your own server incentive, um, anything you want to do. Um, just make sure that you keep us informed by submitting that event form so that we know what's going on and um, keep us posted. All right, don't jump off just yet. Um, before we uh, dive into the question and answers, I just want to jump off the presentation for a second. This is a screenshot of the toolkit that we've mentioned throughout the webinar, but I'm going to actually jump off and go right to the website because I want to do a little tour with you because the toolkit is just so easy, well developed. So this is the main page of the industry.oregonwine.org website, and if you click on marketing, and you click on the Oregon Wine Month tab. This is exactly 
Oops, let me hide this thing here. This is exactly where you're going to find the toolkit here. Um, I want to open up this tab because you were presented with a lot of information today. And this is a comprehensive checklist of all the different things that you can do. Um, this is on the toolkit. So if you want to print this or download it and share it with your staff, that's a really gr great way to keep yourself organized. Um, so the first tab here to submit an event, anything that you are promoting, make sure it gets on the consumer calendar. And this is an easy tab easy form for you to fill out. Make sure your consumer event gets on our calendar so that we can help promote it. Christina talked about um, our social media promotion efforts. This is where you're going to upload your photographs and describe your event or whatever it is that you are um, sharing with us. This is a great way for us to um, put you on our social media and get the word out about whatever it is you're doing in your winery. Um, make an uh, Oregon Wine Month rep nomination form. Again, that will be available um, after May, after you have results from uh, what your distributor has done. Also, this is a sell sheet that Jess talked about that you can share with your distributor. Um, let them know what's going on with the um, rep competition. Um, I'm not going to go through all this, but this is also this tab, the POS graphics. This has a link to our Dropbox, and this is where you're going to find downloadable templates, um, point of sale materials. But this is the one I want to show you. I encourage you to jump on both the Dropbox and the toolkit and just play around and see where the where all these things are. But this one right here, these are the templates. If you click on the um, PowerPoint version, this is where you will be able to uh, customize all of the promotional material that the marketing team created. You can put your logos here, you can print these off, you can put whatever recipes, specials, whatever it is that you've created in your tasting room. This is a really great way to interact with it. Um, so that's under POS graphics and templates. Social media, this is also another one because if you are not social media savvy like I am, this gives a really great breakdown of the difference between Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and how you can easily engage in those platforms. Um, so that's a really great way. Uh, distributor and trade information. Let's go over that really quickly. Um, so this is a completing the form for, um, for your restaurants that are offering an Oregon wine special. I'm just going to click on that so you can see what that looks like. There it is, the open table program that Christina talked about. So there's links to all sorts of things. Wine steward display competition that we talked about. Here uh, you can um, share the slide presentation with your distributor and a whole variety of sell, sell sheets. Um, and then I think, anyway, I encourage you to jump on this and play around. There's all sorts of really good, juicy information. I'm going to be sending you um, a link to this so that you can... Um, uh, access it directly. And now we have, oh, this is just another example of the winery checklist. It will be on the slideshow, but it'll also be on the toolkit. So that's a really great way to keep yourself organized and uh, refer to it for any other ideas. And now we have time for some questions and answers. So if you have any questions, <laughs> if you have any questions, you send the questions, we'll give you the answers, hopefully. <laughs> um, so send those in. We'll stay on for a few minutes to see what comes on in. Um, you can also email us afterwards, but we're on now. We'll see what comes up. I think it was all so clear <laughs> and exciting. Um, we'll give it a couple minutes here, or a minute, um, and see if anybody has any questions. And I think is our contact information Available easily. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll be getting a follow-up email. Oh, it looks oh, like we might. Is there a question coming in? Uh, oh. Okay, there are a few questions. Um, I can't, I can't can you can you review the fifty dollar incentive for server? Program? Okay. Christina's going to jump on and explain that a little better. Okay, so the $50 incent, uh, server incentive is available to all or to only and but all Oregon wine A list restaurants. So there's 114 Oregon wine A list restaurants across the country that are eligible for this promotion. Um, 
that list of restaurants that are eligible can be found at www.oregonwinealist.com. Um, so the so in order to be to redeem that incentive, they just need to fill out that form saying that they're doing a month long Oregon Wine Month promotion. So that form's on the toolkit. Carrie showed you. Once they fill out that form, I will put them on the open table um, page and send them a $50 Visa gift card and they can decide how they wanna use that as an incentive for their servers. Um, some ideas that I'll provide them with when I send that gift card would be, you know, the, the top seller of Oregon wine for the month or the top seller of the Oregon wine menus for the month if they're doing that promotion. So it could be something so it could be for just like Oregon wine sales, or it could be, you know, an incentive to sell the Oregon wine month promotion, however they, they feel would work best in the restaurant. Great. So um, I have a question about where to find uh, the recording of this presentation and the slideshow. That's uh, going to be on the education tab of the industry website, but you're also going to get a link in a follow-up email that's going to send you directly to where you can find the slideshow, the recorded presentation, and we'll also have that checklist um, easily available for you to download or print. Um, so look for your follow-up email and that will be there as well. Okay. Um, a couple of other questions that we've received. Um, first, can we still get materials mailed to the tasting room? Um, if you did not, if you missed the window for ordering a kit for your tasting room, um, well, we are ordering some extra materials that we will have shipped here. The best thing to do is email me. This is Jess. My email is jessica at oregonwine.org, and we will add you to the list while supplies last. Um, I've had two questions come in on that, so. Um, you know, I think well, I think we should have enough for everyone. But um, one of the changes we made la this year, two years ago, we emailed or sorry, we mailed physical copies of um, point of sale to all tasting rooms, and we felt like that was perhaps wasteful of our resources because not everybody used them. Last year, we had them exclusively digital, but we found that that um, puts a lot of burden on the tasting rooms to um, just to decide to get them printed out and to display them. So what we're trying this year is um, we had a, a few weeks window, uh, about a month long window where people could order the um, a tasting room kit for point of sale. So going more by request and really getting them to the people that wanted them. So that was sort of the, the rationale behind how we're doing things this year. We're trying to be smart about your money that we're spending, um, but also making sure that we give you what you need. So anyways, yes, email, uh, email me at jessica at oregonwine.org um, and I will get you added to the list of tasting rooms that we'll be sending kits to. There's a question if we have a limit to how many events we can, that someone can submit for the month and the answer is no. So submit as many events as you like. Um, like individual events. Individual events, we'll yeah. We'll have a separate page for winery month long promotion. Right. So the event calendar is for individual events. Um, so if you submit something that's like two for one tastings for the month of May, that'll be promoted on a different page. Yeah. Um, good point about that. Um, there was one other question I think. And if a restaurant is not currently on the A-list, can they get nominated and then submit for a server incentive? So the 2016 Oregon Wine A-list is um, has been decided. It was a um, a process that we went through um, with a committee, a nominating committee, or um, you know a selection committee back at the end of last year. So that um, that list of restaurants is set. The nomination form for the 2017 Oregon Wine A-list is open. It's on OregonWineAlist.org. Um, and so if you know of somebody that deserves to be on the list and isn't, we highly recommend that you, that you nominate them so that we can consider them for the 2017 list, which will be active next January. 
And I just want to jump jump in really quick. And if you work with a restaurant that's not our neighbors, you can certainly create your own incentive um, for the servers to participate in. There's no reason why you can't do that. Whether it's a special event at your tasting room that you're inviting them to, or or maybe you're you're creating a or um, offering a fifty dollar gift card. But you can certainly jump in and and do your own thing for sure. <coughs> All right, that um, appears to be the end of our questions. I hope that that was helpful to everyone. Um, please do fill out the survey that Carrie is going to send around. Um, it's really, it's we read all of that and it's super helpful to us as we plan um, our industry communications as a whole and also the the off, the educational offerings that that we put together for the industry. Um, it's really you know, something that we're trying to ramp up on and do more of. And so all of your feedback is very helpful at this point. Um, anything else? Any other parting words? Nope. Thanks everybody for your attention. And we look forward to an absolutely amazing, um, fully, participate, fully participatory Oregon Wine Month. We look forward to seeing what all of you get out there and do. Thank you so much. Very good.